Good morning. I feel like the last time I did a, like a morning routine kind of video, I was getting up at 4 a.m. to go to sunrise. Well, it's like approaching winter. Not really, it's only March, but obviously the time that the sun rises gets later every day. And since then, it's already now, it's 20 past five. So I actually love that because it means I'm getting so much more sleep. Oh, that's so exciting. What a morning. This is our morning setup. I do my little breath work on the hill and Oakley just lies there death staring me wanting to go home. So I'm gonna get that done before he bites my head off. It is Wednesday, 6.30 a.m. and normally every week I'm at the Pilates at this, at the Pilates, at Pilates at this time on this day. So obviously I'm not there right now. And basically the reason why is that's kind of why I wanted to bring you guys along for today. So today I start what is called my 10 day taper. So I have a big race in 10 days today and it's probably like the second most important race of my season. The next one being nationals in four weeks, maybe a little bit under like three weeks. And what we do leading up to our major races is we do this thing called a 10 day taper. So a normal taper for like a normal race that doesn't really have that much significance would be maybe the last two training sessions before my race, I would pull it back and do like half a session, keep the intensity high. I'd have a full day of rest the day before. And I just sort of like, I guess, prioritize my recovery and my sleep leading up to those days more than anything. But when we have a major race, we do a 10 day taper. So normally a taper would be like three days. We do it for 10. If you want to read more into it, it is called the 10 day taper by Charlie Francis. And he got his athlete, Ben Johnson to do it back I think it was in the 80s and he was like the fastest man in the world and this table was supposed to work and we do it every year because that's sort of the style of training his charlie francis's training program is kind of what my track coach follows a little bit so we do this taper leading up to it and it is honestly the biggest mental challenge basically like something that dictates like your speed and your ability to like run as fast as you possibly can is your central nervous system and our training is always scheduled in a way that means our central nervous system is always like ready and firing so that we're not like train that's why i don't train every day on the track so my central nervous system is always ready to go we have 48 hours between our track sessions so on anyways this taper is 10 days leading up to a race day 10 so that's today you absolutely destroy your central nervous system we have a session tonight that is equivalent to the whole week of training in one session. It is so huge. And then we train every second day for the next 10 days and the sessions get so much shorter. So today I have a huge session of like blocks, sleds, long reps. It's seriously huge. It's probably gonna take me like three hours. And then on Friday, it'll be like a little bit less. But then the, by the last like three sessions, I'm literally rocking up to the track and doing like three block starts, just sort of like flushing it out tapping into my central nervous system. But the whole point of this taper, sorry, this probably makes no sense, but the whole point of this taper is that like my central nervous system is like so fresh and ready to go by that day. And when you follow this taper, the only way that it actually works and pays off is if you follow it like to the T. So I'm not allowed to do anything outside of this taper. Seven days out, I have to stop doing gym, can't do Pilates. I'm like not supposed to go on like many walks. I'm obviously just gonna do as short as possible with Oakley. And it is mentally so tough because the last three sessions, which will be Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, like this week slash next week, I don't train for like five days and all I do is rock up to the track. I do three block starts and then I go home. So if I don't nail those three block starts and feel good about them, then I've got to dwell on it for the next two days. So it is super exciting. I can't believe how quickly like this time of the season has come around. I haven't even like, like I can't, I seriously like can't even like fathom. Like I haven't even thought about this race because it's come around so far. So the fact that I'm starting my taper today is just like so weird because I'm like, why am I tapering? Oh yeah, my race is in 10 days. How is Easter in 10 days? That is so wild. Also you guys, I'm gonna just attach a little video because it's just so crazy. But yesterday I lifted 200 kilos. So I did get a little bit of hate in my DM saying that wasn't even a single rep because all I was doing was pin squats from the quarter position. That was exciting. Um, kind of sad though, because even in the gym, like I'm not gonna be hitting heavy weights from now on. So 
That was fun while it lasted. Okay, journaling and everything is done and all my little non-negotiables. Now I've got a meeting and it's quite early in the morning because I've got a meeting with someone on the other side of the world. So it's like yesterday afternoon with them. So I'm going to do that. Apparently it only takes 15 minutes, which will be good. And then I've got to go to the physio because your girl is broken. So we're off to the physio. Last week was actually supposed to be my last physio appointment, like ever, but I'm back, which is a bit annoying. I've been having this like knee niggle for a couple weeks now, which is frustrating and I've been managing that and it's kind of feeling better. It's fine. It's weird. It's fine when I race, but obviously because my mind is like in so many other places, but as soon as I go to training, it's just like agony. So off to the physio to get that sort of sorted out and let's just pray that this is the last um, visit ever. Okay, we've arrived at the physio. And obviously I'm not going to bring you guys in there. I don't know if that's actually allowed. So I'll see you when I get back. Call Oak one more time. Do it again. Literally, literally all day, every day, Boyd and I will be on different floors of the house and be like, Call Oak! Call Oak! And we go, Oak! Then he runs up the stairs. Because it takes a lot for Oakley to run up the stairs. Because, you know, he's got... Actually, Boyd and I had a debate the other day. Do you reckon it's easier or harder to walk upstairs with four legs or two legs? I think it's easier to go up the stairs with four. Because, like, it's hard to coordinate. But I think it would be easier. But it would be a lot harder to go down the stairs with four. And easier with two. Crazy. Made my oats. They're still the same as the past like three years. I've got like so much filming to do today, but a lot of it is like in the Arvo around my training sessions. So, got a big day. But I'm just glad I'm not editing. I've been editing like every day for the past like week, and it's so draining because I just sit on the couch. My posture is all like this, and I'm on my iPad like. Oh my god, it's just, it's good when it's done, but in the moment, it's just so, so time consuming. So, yeah, it's fun to get creative again. All right, I've been sitting out on my deck in the sun doing some video planning for quite a while now before I start filming the Savo, and I just received this ginormous parcel. I thought it was my new fake trees that I bought for my new living area, and it's this huge parcel from CSB. I feel like such a bitch right now, I'm like opening this in front of you guys and not showing you what it is, but. You'll see soon. Also, speaking of surprises, I got sent this yesterday from Whoop. It arrived at my doorstep and I was like, who on earth would have sent me this? Got a little plant, the pink pot, which is so on brand. And they were just saying like, congrats on my race on the weekend. Like, that's so cute. Okay, so the product campaign thing that I needed to record today literally hasn't shown up and it's 2 p.m. So I've made a star on something else and I'm filming another campaign, but I'm just having a quick lunch break because I've got to leave for training soon and I haven't even had lunch yet. So of course I'm having my little chicken nourish bowl. Um, give me one sec, I'll show you the final product. And obviously Kewpie mayo on top, duh. Okay, here is lunchy lunch. Okay, let's pack my train bag. So, got my spikes. Um, these are my race spikes. When you race on grass, this is like how long they are. Whereas these are my track ones. Like they're like a little stud. So obviously I'm not racing, training in these ones. They're my racing ones, but I've just got them in there just in case. And then I've got a towel, got my slides for when I finish the session. Got a little trigger ball, another trigger ball. I've had my massage gun. My tripod, because I need to film this session. My new foam roller, it's made of cork and it's so good because it's like really small and light. It's from Roll Cork, one of my friend's businesses. She started it in Adelaide, um, actually in Tassie. And it's really good. So highly recommend if you're in the, if you need a new roller. Icy cold bottle of water that I probably won't even drink because I just don't get thirsty at the track because I don't, like I'm doing sprints. But we've got that in case. And then on the way to training, it's like a thing that I have to have a bag of like fun day sweets. Love them. 
And then this is the good stuff. This is my Dr. Hydrate that I have like every training session. And that's why I don't really like to drink water because why would I when I have this water that actually tastes good? Well, water does taste good. This tastes better. And I won't be training in this t-shirt. This is my actual training fit. But um, I'm going to the post office on the way and I feel a little bit vulnerable wearing a bra at pack fair. So the boy's home from work today because he's like quite sick. And I'm about to show you what he's been doing all day. Look at you two. Oh my God, guys, I was so stressed. Like the post office is, doesn't close soon, but I've got training until late. So this is my last opportunity to get it. And I'm filming like AM first thing tomorrow and nothing was in my PO box. And I was like, fuck, I was like, what do I do, what do I do? And then I got the post ladies to do some deep digging down the back and they found it. So I would have just arrived. Oh, that is the best feeling ever. Alrighty, we have arrived at the track. It's gonna be a hot afternoon. I'm pretty sure, I don't know 100%, but I'm pretty sure my session is like, I've got overspeed, I'll have flies, I'll have 30 meter starts, I think 50 meter starts, some 60s, some 80s, some 100s, some 120s and some 150s. So it's a ginormous session. Like normally this session would be two 80s, and like two sleds maybe so yeah it's gonna be a lot so I'm here like an hour early because I need to start warming up so I'm good to go when everyone gets here because my session will probably take I'm gonna say like a 30 minute warm up and then like two hours of running minimum Can't tell by how dark it is right now that's how long my session took but it actually wasn't that bad I had fun it was a lot easier mentally because I only had one rep of like every distance so normally I had like if I had it on the normal session I would have had like six reps of every distance so it was fun I liked it and now my volume like dramatically decreases so I think my next session I literally have 330s and one 120. I definitely enjoyed it while it was happening because I know that I'm gonna miss the volume so now I need to get home and have dinner I'm absolutely starving I feel like I literally left the house five hours ago so hungry I just got home and I'm just having a little kombucha while I wait for my dinner to cook Okay, so dinner is served. This is what I meal prep for the week. Now, I need to explain what it is. So, you guys know I loved my chicken enchilada bake last week. And I don't know why I thought I would make something different. Because it was so good. And it was just really working for me. I really look forward to it every time I had it. So, I decided I'd make a, like, with the same pulled chicken in the slow cooker. I'd make, like, a chicken, like, satay stir fry. So I made that and I did my normal recipe that I like normally would use when I used to make it really good. But obviously the chicken would be slow cooked so it'd be like way better. But I added so much veg and so much more chicken than normal that the ratio of sauce and veg and meat is so off that the sauce is, you can't even taste it at all. It just tastes like a big mushy chickeny vegetable-y thing. It's not great. And I used the whole tub or the whole can of satay sauce so I couldn't use any more because I ran out. So... It's kind of average and then I try to turn it sort of back into the chicken enchilada bake sort of style. So I'm putting it in the oven so it's like a chicken satay curry bake. Covering it in mozzarella cheese which is like really random for a curry. Cover it in guacamole, <laughs> coriander and um, spring onion. So it's like a half Mexican, half Italian, half curry sort of thing but it's actually pretty good but it's not amazing so I don't love it I'm definitely gonna be making my enchilada bake as of next week okay it's time for dessert obviously ninja creamy I normally have it in the arvo but I was really rushed this afternoon so I'm having it for dessert it's like eight o'clock I am trying not to eat food really late or like close to bedtime because it's stuffing up my sleep but today is an exception had a big training session and I'm not missing out on having my ninja creamy so oh <laughs> got a little boob little nipple but 
chocolate protein, peanut butter, milk, and coconut milk, and Yopro. I didn't put any fruit in this one because I just thought I'd change it up and see if it actually makes a difference because like I've been putting banana in there and it's really banana-y so it's fine if I want to have a banana flavoured one but sometimes I don't and it's very overpowering so I see I've seen people just put some, like protein shakes in so I want to see how it goes sorry Boyd sorry <laughs> Okay, let's do a Ninja Creamy consistency check. This is like my actual favorite thing to do. If you follow me on Instagram, I literally post this every day. <laughs> oh yeah, that is good. It's giving like a soft serve, but it's also quite icy still. I think that's like, because there's no banana, it's less creamy. It's a little bit more icy. I don't know, I'll have to see, but I go through so much frozen fruit. So I kind of would love if this is good. It looks good though. So basically, if you don't know how Ninja Creamy works, you have to freeze the tub of mixture for like 24 hours until you put it in the machine to actually make the ice cream. So I like meal prep it the night before. So I've just made mine for tomorrow. I don't know how it's going to go. Hmm. So it's coconut milk, mango, vanilla protein, and lots of honey. And I put that in the freezer. Also, sorry, I've been a little bit slack on the videos lately. I used to be really good with like posting every single Thursday, but just got a lot on my plate at the moment, so we're a little bit slower. But I hope you guys sort of like this video. It was kind of a bit of a boring day. I thought it would be a little bit more exciting, but there was a bit of a fluff around with all my work and everything. So, hope you enjoyed. I'll see you guys next week, and I'm gonna bring you guys along because I'm shooting my new Move With Us program on Friday. So, you guys are gonna come along with me and see what it looks like sort of behind the scenes. So yes, goodbye. I love you guys so much and I'll see you next time.